Okay, let's take a look at the answers to this uh, problem trail. Again, this is chapter 7. Um, number 1, as n increases, so as our sample size gets larger, um, what happens to bias and what happens to variability? Um, definitely the variability decreases um, if you have bigger sample sizes, um, but the bias is just really not affected. Um, so it would be, the answer here would be B, the bias doesn't change. Okay, think of like if the question is worded weird or something, it doesn't matter how many people you have in your sample size, you're still going to have bias. So uh, the answer is B, does not change, and then the variability will decrease. Uh, remember, N is in the denominator for both formulas for uh, standard deviation. So as N gets larger, that whole thing will get smaller. Okay, and I'm just going to run through these in order. I know it was a certain trail order to go through, but I'm just going to jump to number two. Um, how can we tell if the sampling distribution of sample proportions approximates a normal curve? So um, the deal here with proportions, this is the one that kind of came directly from the binomial distribution. Um, and, and we did a couple things where we showed as the sample size gets larger um, and as P gets larger, those kind of go hand in hand together. That's when the binomial distribution kind of got normal. Um, so that's the, the issue here. It, it deals with both N and P. Um, so the answer to this one's D. Um, A is just the, the standard deviation formula. Um, answer B really doesn't apply to anything. And then answer C is more for um, one of the options for sample means being normal, not proportions. Okay, so this one's D. And remember to show those calculations on the test or the AP test. Plug in what N is, plug in what P is, show they're both bigger than 10. Okay, or if not, we say we can't use normal. Okay, problem three here. Um, poll of all voters found that 26% approved of the local mayor. Okay, so they're giving me a percentage of the entire group of a population. That's a parameter. That is the population proportion. That's P. Okay, and then, of course, they give you N. And they're looking for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So the formula for that um, would look like the standard deviation of the P hats. P. Okay, 1 minus P. Okay, I like to, I like to kind of do the subtraction before I even write it out. Um, and then over N and do the calculations. Throw that in a calculator. That one should give you answer choice C, um, 0 0.0277. Okay, moving along here. Number four. Let's, let's do this. 20%, um, suppose 20% of students wear glasses. Um, which best describes the sampling distribution? So that, again, this is proportions, okay? They're giving you a percentage. So P is given as 0.2 um, or 0 0.20 and N is given as 15. So let's see, our options, it's either normal with a certain mean standard deviation or does not follow normal. So let's make sure, let's see if it is normal. Um, if it's normal, or I'm sorry, if N times P is greater than or equal to 10, let's check that one first. Um, N is 15, right? P is 0.2. Is that number bigger than or equal to 10? Don't think so, okay? I think that would get you, what, a three? Um, so this one is a case where the distribution, because the sample size and P kind of together are not large enough, it does not follow a normal distribution. Okay, if it did, then the mean would be 0.2 and we could get the standard deviation like the previous problem. But this one, not big enough, nothing we can do, answer is B. Right, problem five, number of texts sent um, per day is right skewed with a mean of 15, standard deviation 35. Find the probability that a random sample of 50, okay, so there's an N value, N is, is 50, um, will have sent more than a total of, okay, this is kind of the key here, it's a little bit of, they worded things a little differently. Um, since the sample size is above 30, we know that we can use normal, okay, because this one's talking about means, this has nothing to do with proportions. Um, but the issue here is they're saying 1,000 total texts for 50 people. So that means an average 1,000 for 50 students would mean an average of 20. Okay, so I want to know what's the chances or what is the probability that um, this sample averages more than 20. 
Okay, so again, we, we showed the normal, make sure we would, we would write something, we'd say we can approximate, um, or we can use normal approximation because n is greater than 50. Now we can think about the mean um, should be 15. The standard deviation of this, the standard deviation of the x bar is the formula is, um, it's the population's value, which was given as 35 over the square root of the sample size. Okay, and what we want to do is figure out how likely is it to get more than a total of 1,000, so more than 20 per person. So what I'm thinking is 20 is up here. I want to know how likely is it to get a sample mean in that shaded region up there. That's going to be our question. Okay, so this one's going to be a normal CDF setup. Okay, we showed it was normal. We know the mean. We know the standard deviation. We know our upper and lower bounds, so it would just be set up like a normal CDF. Um, Again, our shaded part starts at 20 and goes up. The mean was the um, 15 that they gave us. And then the standard deviation, um, we could calculate whatever that was, 35 over root 50. Okay, or just leave that in. I actually do that. I don't get like a decimal. I do it in the normal CDF step so it doesn't round anything at all, really. Um, and you should end up getting uh, about 0.1562. Okay, so that one was C. Okay, moving on, number six, the central limit theorem. Okay, it's a big theorem. Um, usually if a theorem has like a name to it, um, it's pretty big. So the central limit theorem, um, even though choice A seems, you know, seems like a good choice, definitely a true statement. <laughs> um, this one, remember, deals with the sampling distribution of X bar approximates normal. So this question I kind of... Get, like the only answer that like really applies to this chapter was was option C. I guess D kind of is at least a statistics thing, but um, answer here is C. So just remember that's the thing, or this theorem is the one that allows us to approximate a normal distribution if the sample size is large enough. And what number do we use? What was the magic number? Okay, they kind of came up with 30 based on a bunch of testing some things and theory and, and all that stuff. Uh, 30 was kind of the magic number for sample size. Okay, so even if the population's not normal, the sample means will be, okay, if you take sample sizes of 30 or greater. Okay, so that's that. Number seven, if the probability of flipping a coin um, is, is flipping a tails is 0.5, if we flip 700 times, how likely would it be to get more than 55%? Okay, so definitely a proportions problem. They're giving you proportions. This first number is basically the population's parameter. Okay, that's what it is for all tosses. Um, so we want to know if we if we tossed 700 times, there's a there's like a sample size. How likely would that proportion be more than 0.55? So this is this is like a, a possible p hat. Okay, so let's make sure that we can use a normal distribution. Is it does n times p um, give us a number bigger than or equal to 10. Okay, 700 times 0.5, half of 700, it does work. Okay, and then um, 700 times 1 minus p, um, that's going to be the same thing, right, because 1 minus p is going to be uh, 0.5 also. So we can use normal. Okay, um, so let's set up our picture. Okay, we know that it is a normal distribution. We know it's centered around 0.5, okay? Most samples would have a, a p hat of close to 0.5. I want to know how likely is it to get a 0.55 or higher, okay? So I don't know exactly how far out it is because we didn't figure out the standard deviation, but it's somewhere up on the right here. And again, I think the way I drew it gave it a lot more area than it's really going to have. But again, it's just a sketch. So that's, that's all we're doing there. Um, so we got ourselves a normal CDF problem. Um, so let's get it set up. We know the lower bound where we started shading was 0.55. We know the upper bound. It's actually, there is no upper bound, so we just use this really big number, 9999. We know what the mean was. Okay, there's a formula for standard deviation. Square root of 0.5. Okay, that's P times 1 minus P all over N. Okay, and that should give you an answer. And I, and I think one of the options uh, rounded a little different. I think it turned out to be like 0 
0 0.04 or something like that if you use the full standard deviation without rounding. Um, but I was going for choice A. I think, I, again, I rounded the standard deviation just a tiny bit to get 0 0.0039. Okay, number eight. What happens to the mean and the standard deviation um, of the sampling distribution as the sample size increases? Okay, so it's, as the sample size increases, the mean is the mean is the mean. Okay, that's not that's not changing. That's whatever the population's value is. So it doesn't matter how big your sample is, but the standard deviation will decrease. Okay, again, less variability as n gets larger, so option uh, B there. Mu does not change, sigma decreases. Okay, number nine, another kind of definition thing here. Um, national median income is 35000 In a survey of a given city, the median income was 42000 Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. They're taking a survey that's a sample. Okay, the 42,000 is describing a sample. Sample starts with S, statistic starts with S. Okay, the first number given, the 35,000, that's the national number, that's the population value. Okay, population starts with P, parameter starts with P, that describes populations. Okay, so that one should be answer D. First one's a parameter, second one is a statistic. And lastly, uh, let's see, another proportion problem. It looks like they're giving us a percentage. Um, so the, the, the population parameter is 30%. That's P. It's 0.3. Okay. Um, how, how likely would it be to have a random sample of a given size? There's N. Um, and we want to be within 5%. Okay. So first off, we've got to make sure we can use normal. Okay. N times P. 600 times 0.3, is that greater than or equal to 10? And n times 1 minus p. Okay, and again, verify those both are larger than 10, so normal's good. Normal approximation can be used. Okay, so let's think about this picture now. Um, we know the center of it's 0.3. Okay, again, the center is always whatever the population's value is. Okay, this one is worded a little differently. I want to know how likely is it to be within 5% okay, of the national average. So within 5%, it could be 5% bigger, okay, which would be 35. That could be 5% smaller. Then the 30%, I could be at 25%. Okay, so again, my picture's not very good here. Um, but we're looking for area in the middle there, okay, like the middle hump there. We know it's normal. We check the conditions. We got our picture, okay? It looks like we got a lower bound, an upper bound. We got a mean, okay? And we have a formula for standard deviation. So if we set that all up, normal CDF, okay? I want the area between 0.25 and 0.35, okay? If the mean is 0.3, and again, standard deviation formula, we got to use P, 1 minus P, Um, all over n. What was that? 600. Okay. And that should get you right around 0.992, about 99%. Okay. So it's pretty remarkable that, um, you know, if, if the national average is 30%, you're going to be within that, within 5% of that, I should say. That's kind of like a margin of error we'll talk about. 99% um, of the time. So a sample of 600 is, is pretty pretty good to estimate the population's value. Alrighty.